What's going on everybody, David here. Today we're talking credit cards, travel rewards credit cards, and today we are talking about the Chase Sapphire Preferred Card. So, let me first start off by saying I am I'm going to start doing a series of videos on credit cards, specifically on, on travel rewards credit cards. And the reason for that is when I first started out in the whole travel rewards credit cards uh, industry, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what cards to get. I got a few credit cards that I shouldn't have gotten. And so I want to show you the different, the, the breakdown to show you different uh, benefits and some of the uh, negative parts of uh, credit cards. And that way you can kind of decide what credit card is best for you. So the Chase Sapphire Preferred Card is a very good card. And I'll show you some of the perks. And as far as the negatives, there are not too many negatives. I guess the only negative would really be that you have to pay a $95 annual fee. So just be aware of that. The good part of the annual fee situation is the introductory is zero. So you don't have to pay anything when you first get the card. So you can have it for a year. If you like it, you can keep it. If you don't, you can cancel it. And you don't have to pay that $95 annual fee. But be aware that there is a $95 annual fee and some people get really, um, that, that's a turn off for them and they don't want to have to pay any type of fee for a credit card. But if you can get more than $95, uh, $95 worth of value every month or every year, then it's a benefit to keep the card. So just looking at all the stuff down here, maybe you'll, you'll change your mind about that whole annual fee situation. So 50,000 points, so you get 50,000 bonus points, you have to hit the minimum spend of $4,000, and that's in the three-month period. That might sound like a lot, but if you're using your credit card instead of your debit card and then paying your credit card off every two weeks or paying it off every month, then you'll be fine uh, hitting that. Most people can hit that spend limit. It's, it's, it's really, it's, it looks like a lot, but it's really not that much. So uh, you also... If you get the $50,000, the, the, the bonus points, then you're looking at about $625. And that is through the Chase portal, okay? Chase Ultimate Rewards. That's through their portal, their travel portal. Now, you can get even more value if you go directly to, let's say, uh, Chase is a partner with United Airlines. If you go directly to United, you can get more value. And let me explain to you how that works. So let's say I transfer these points directly to United and I want to fly to Hawaii. Uh, a ticket to Hawaii round trip is about from uh, LAX, from LA is about 35 to 40,000 points. Okay. The If I look at a ticket, that ticket is probably, when I say ticket, a ticket that I'm paying for, it's probably going to be in the neighborhood of seven, eight hundred bucks. Uh, sometimes 900 depending on when you when you get it so the if you look at the point breakdown the cash value I'm showing down here the redemption cash value is five hundred dollars and that's for fifty thousand points now if I transfer to United and I'm using forty thousand points so forty thousand points would be equivalent to four hundred dollars so the value, cash value, is $400 that I'm transferring over to United, but I'm getting about $800 in value because if I paid cash for my my flight, then I would be paying $800. So the equivalent would be equivalent to about 80,000 points. Hope you guys are following me, um, but that's kind of how you see the breakdown, and it changes. It, it varies from airline to airline, from hotel to hotel. You're going to get different value. So if you go through their portal, yes, you're going to pay $625, or you're going to get $625 value. But if you transfer to their partners, you will get even better value. So uh, so we looked at the annual fee. We know there's a $95 annual fee, but you can already see uh, even if you cash out, that's good for, what, five years? It's $500 if you just do a cash out. $500 value once you hit that threshold. So that can sh I mean, if you just want to do that you're going to get value out of that up to about what five years of value because it's 500 500 bucks so that's not 
that's the worst redemption to cash out. That's the worst redemption that you can do. You can get a lot more value out of the out of using the the uh, travel portal or directly transferring to uh, the different uh, airline and hotel partners. Okay, so as we as we show shown you here, these are the portals. This is the cash value. Let's move on down. Okay, the travel purchases. Okay, this is very important, and this is one thing that kind of confused me at first. I didn't know what two times meant. I, I, it, it's not it's not always easily explained. So let me explain to you this way. Uh, forget the times. Just look at it this way. For every two, uh, so for two points, if I'm traveling, if I'm spending on travel, if I'm spending on airlines, if I'm spending on hotels, taxis, trains, I'm getting two points for every dollar that I spend. So if I spend five hundred dollars, I'm getting a thousand points. So that's the way that you you uh, need to look at that. Uh, as far as restaurants, it's the same thing. For every dollar I spend, I get two points. So if I go for the whole trip, I'm out. I spend a total of five hundred dollars at restaurants. I will get a thousand points. Now, all other purchases means anything else. So if I go to the grocery store and I buy peanut butter, I'm only getting one to one. So if I spend a dollar, I'm getting a dollar, I'm getting a point. So that's how you that's how you break down the points. You need to kind of think long term. So over a year's time, how much money have you spent and how many points do you get as far as that's concerned? And you can get, I mean, look at it this way. And this is the easiest breakdown that I tell people when it comes to your 50,000 points. People think, oh, how much value is 50,000 points? Well, 50,000 points is equivalent to uh, two round trip tickets anywhere in the U.S. Uh, and that not including Hawaii, but anywhere else in the U.S., mainland, uh, you're getting two round trip tickets. So generally about 25,000 points is what it'll cost for you to fly from uh, Los Angeles to New York. So that's the value there. So you can get two round trip tickets. If you look at a, a, a ticket from LAX to New York, if you get a good deal, you're probably going to get it for around five, six hundred dollars. But for the most part, you know, that that's that's where it will be. So five, six hundred dollars, I'm only paying, I'm only using in point value, I'm only using two hundred and fifty dollars because I'm getting twenty five thousand points. So you can see how that you can really benefit from from using these travel rewards cards. Okay, so moving on down here, we are down to the uh, foreign transaction fees. There are no foreign transaction fees, so if I'm in a different country and I'm using my credit card, they're not going to charge me any extra fees for using it outside of, of the U.S. Uh, the merchants, they just show you how many merchants. Now, you we're looking here, you see all these, these other numbers here. All this is, they're just comparing it to these, these two other credit cards. I will personally go over these two credit cards, so we don't have to, I won't do the comparison right now, but that's, that's what they're showing there as far as the breakdown goes. So, uh, you also have the transfer points. Okay, this is very important as well. So just realize when you get when you have transfer partners in with this credit card, it's all one to one. So if I transfer 10,000 points to United, I'm getting 10,000 10, point value at, at United. Now, there are different credit cards and you have to be really careful about this. Some credit cards I've transferred points. Let's say I transfer 10,000 points to Virgin America when Virgin America was um, when they didn't have the merger. And I don't even know, I haven't checked with them lately, but it was, you didn't get the full value. So if I transferred 10,000 points, I was only going to get 5,000, uh, 5,000 point value. And there are different reasons for that. Uh, Virgin America, their point system was a little different. So you would get more value out of 5,000 points than you would normally get, uh, with, um, with with the 5,000 points on a different airline so there there it was let's just say it was cheaper it was, you can use less points so that's the breakdown with Chase it's one to one all their partners so you know you if you transfer 10,000 points you're going to get 10,000 wherever you transfer them 
Uh, the okay, this is really important as well, and I've used this uh, from time to time. You know, when you go to the airport and no, not the airport, when you go to get a rental car, they always try to sell you their insurance and and all that, and then you tell them, oh, well, you know, I have insurance, and they say, well, is it secondary? Is it primary? And sometimes you don't know, and you end up getting their insurance. Well. Chase, if you use their credit card, the Chase uh, uh, Sapphire Preferred, you get primary collision insurance. So you don't have to worry about getting their insurance. You have it covered here. You don't have to get your insurance company involved. If you have an accident, you can go straight through Chase. So that's a huge benefit, and I've used it several times. Uh, trip cancellation, you'll have to look more into this. I've never used this before. But uh, this would be in situations where, let's say, you had an emergency and you weren't able to um, make the trip, or you were in, you were out somewhere and you got really sick on a trip and you had to be rushed home. That that type of stuff. So that's what this insurance does. You'll have to look more into it. Like I said, I've never used it, so I can't really speak to to how that works. Uh, the there no they don't have any airline fee credits on this credit card. Uh, now, if you're in a situation, one of the benefits of using a credit card is you have that uh, zero liability protection. And I've been in a situation where I've I've used my debit card somewhere, and for whatever reason, they got my information, and they went and took money directly out of my bank account. So, in this situation, there's no money coming out of your bank account because it's coming off the credit card. As long as you monitor monitor your credit card, you'll know, hey, $400, I didn't spend this $400. You call Chase, and they will take care of it for you. There's nothing directly linked to your bank account. And so in the situation where I had used my debit card, that was a situation where they took $400. Now I had to wait. They had to do their, their investigation. You have to wait a time period. It could be a week. It could be two weeks where you don't have that money. And if it's... If it's money that you need to pay your bills and things like that, well, now you're in a situation that uh, you don't want to be in. So that's really good, and that's a benefit of using credit card as long as you can manage and not overspend and pay your credit card off every month. It's definitely uh, better to use your credit card. And I was told uh, that if you, anytime you're in a situation where that car, that credit card, like let's say you're at a restaurant and you know the like the you go to like Denny's or something where you walk up to the counter the cashier and you pay that's fine to use a debit card but if you're in a situation where you're at a restaurant and you put your little credit card in a little envelope and the waitress takes your credit card the waiter takes your credit card over somewhere else and it's out of your line of sight that's when you need to use you don't use a debit card you use a credit card because they can be doing anything all they there are situations where, you know, and this is, you know, it's it's sad to say, but there are situations where you'll have uh, someone that's waiting on you. Be, they get paid. They're getting paid by someone who needs identities, and all they do is they take that credit card to the back, they sl slide it through a, a skimmer, and they have all your information on that credit card, and then they then they give that information to someone else, and that someone else is paying them a hundred dollars for each each uh, I you know the for all that information hundred dollars for each they can do that all day and just think how many people they wait on in let's say five six seven eight hour period they're getting all that information from you so just be careful and using your credit card can really uh, stop that because they can slide that they can get all your information however as soon as you see that come out on your on your uh, your credit statement then you'll know hey this isn't me, and they can go ahead and take care of that. All right, enough of that. I don't want to talk too much about that. Now, um, you have 24-hour 24 24, uh, hour, uh, customer service, so you can call someone 24 hours a day and uh, get uh, uh, answers to your questions and stuff like that. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to go over that really quickly with you guys. Um, actually, the video took a lot longer than I thought it was going to, but... Chase Sapphire Preferred, definitely a good card to uh, consider 
And if you have any questions, please post them below. Let me know what you guys think as far as credit cards, what credit cards you guys use. And if you have any suggestions of uh, future videos, different credit cards that you would like to hear more about, please uh, leave that in the comments below. Uh, please subscribe for more. And uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next one.